what is controlled fill, and its common types. During the foundation preparation, we very often heard that controlled fill, or engineered fill is required, and should be placed to support structures, or slab on ground. So, let's learn what controlled, or engineered fill is. Controlled fill refers to the fill materials, for which the engineering properties are to be controlled, in terms of quality and density. Controlled fill is a requirement, for heavily loaded slab on grounds, like commercial, or industrial slab on ground. It is also recommended for residential ones. Where used, all foundation layers of a slab on ground must be filled with a controlled fill, including base course, Subbase, select fill, and the subgrade formed by filling. In order to achieve appropriate controlled fill, the following requirements are essential. First, material selection. Second, the fill layer by layer placement. Third, moisture content control. Last, soil testing. Let's start from the material selection. Material types should be carefully selected and should not comprise any deleterious materials. Let's think about this. Gravel, sand, clay, and ripped rocks. These are common site one materials from cuts or borrow pits on site or from nearby source. Do you think these naturally occurring soils or rocks are suitable? Well, when considering these material types, potential issues associated with each type should be taken into consideration. Let's check from gravel. When considering it, avoid single-sized or gap-graded gravel with void. Otherwise it may lead to the subsequent migration of finer materials. Next is clay. The fact is that all clay-based soils have the potential to be somewhat reactive. And reactive clay reacts to the changing of moisture content. This means, it tends to expand in volume, when its moisture content increases, and to shrink, when its moisture content decreases. Hence, clay of high reactivity need to be under strict moisture and density control. Let's see rocks now. Rocks commonly comprises sandstone, shale, or mudstone. Whatever being used, the key is to avoid large particles. When excavating trenches for footing or services, large rocks lead to difficulties. Also it could be an issue when driving or boring piles. So far, we've covered key things to check when considering commonly used fill material. But there is unsuitable or deleterious material which should not be used. Some examples are organic soils, saline, acid sulfate soils, chemically aggressive or polluted soils, and contaminated soils. Okay. As we've just covered material selection, now let's see how the material is to be placed layer by layer. The fill will usually need to be placed in layers of 150 to 300 millimeters, and compacted every layer. How can each layer's thickness be defined? Generally the thickness of each layer is governed by the degree of required compaction. The thinner the layer is, the higher the degree of compaction can be achieved. For example, in subgrade layers should be placed and compacted every 300 mm, while in base layer should be every 150 mm. The reason is that base coarse layers typically require higher degree of compaction. One common issue during the compaction process is the failure to detect and remove unsuitable materials. As you can see this photo, like plastic, wood, and metal. These remain material will result in lower compaction level. Cool, now let's talk about the moisture content control. The moisture content in fill should be maintained at the optimized level, which is defined based on material used. For example, look at this chart of optimal moisture content level by material. Blue line is for sand, and yellow line is for clay. 
as you can see the blue line, optimal moisture content level for sand should be typically maintained less than 10%. On the other hand, as you can see the yellow line in the chart, clay's optimal moisture content should be near 20%. What if it is not optimal? Look at this picture. With the optimal moisture content level, suitable water content makes soil particle dense. However if soil is compacted with too high moisture level, water fills up the void among soil particles like this, as water is nearly incompressible. Eventually it will prevent densification of soil, and even softening the soil, if the fill contains high clay content. Alright, finally we are in the last part, soil testing. The objective here is to make sure the soil testing are carried out at suitable frequency, and coverage, for quality assurance purpose. There are a few soil testing methodologies. But one of the most commonly used field density and moisture content testing is, nuclear method using radioactive isotopes. The good thing of this test is that it is only slightly destructive, and the test results can be obtained within minutes. When proper testing is not done, the controlled fill may be rejected. For example, even if the fill on site is apparently well prepared or compacted, if no density or moisture content testing is done, it may be rejected. Or, though QA and certification are in place, but not in compliance with relevant standards, it will be also rejected. Also, if all tests are done properly in compliance with relevant standards by a previous owner, but the records were lost, it will be rejected as well. Finally, we've covered all four steps to prepare engineered, or controlled fills. In summary, if any of these steps are not done correctly, it means we will have an uncontrolled fills. In another words, the uncontrolled fill generally consists of selection of an unsuitable materials like organic soils or inadequately prepared or compacted fill or moisture unconditioned fill or no testing or QA in place. See you in the next video. We, Tele Training make most practical contents for quality construction industry.